Guys Mr. Newmobile here. iPad Air 2020, release date, specs, and leaks. Please subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Twitter by clicking the links in the description. Rumors about the next generation iPad Air have been rumbling around for a while now. Previously, it had been speculated that Apple would be upgrading the Air to an 11-inch display and an A13 Bionic sock. Apple would be dropping the price of the fourth generation model. However, while it had been assumed that the next iPad Air would arrive at some point this year, that may not be the case. Instead, Camille now predicts that Apple will release the fourth generation model in March 2021. If that is the case, then we would expect Apple to time its release with the unveiling of the next Magic Keyboard. Apple's iPad Air looks like it's the next tablet to be updated, possibly as soon as next month. So, it's not surprising that the rumors are beginning to seep out. The latest comes from leaker Kamiya. In a new tweet, the reliable tipster claims something very particular about the upcoming iPad, it will only have one camera. So that, But what is remarkable is the claim that the single camera will be an ultra-wide lens. The same reliable leaker, Kamiya, has now let slip a very exciting tidbit about the Apple Pencil. At first, the tweet was pretty cryptic. It just said 3 milliseconds, millis when asked if this meant Apple Pencil latency. So, the next Apple Pencil will have very low latency. To put this in context, the Apple Pencil, second generation, has a latency of 9 milliseconds, and, as you'll know, if you've tried it, it's very fast indeed. The trick with a stylus like this is, for it to have any chance of succeeding, it needs to feel as though the virtual ink flows as smoothly as the real stuff. If you see the line being drawn, just that bit behind where you feel stylus against glass, the effect is ruinous and discourages you from doing it again. To thrive, it must feel like the transfer from the pencil to the screen must be instantaneous. Samsung, for its just-released tablets, the Galaxy Tab 7 and Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, rightly boasted that it had low latency on its stylus, called the S Pen. It measures this at 9 milliseconds. So, any reduction on Apple's part would put the company ahead again. Here's the clever bit, the improved latency could happen for existing pencils, rather than be restricted to a new model. I'm assuming that because the Apple Pencil, second generation, originally had latency 13, that the latency dropped to 9 milliseconds, so it's possible that this new predicted change could be achieved without you having to buy a replacement Apple Pencil. Kamiya doesn't specify which generation of Apple Pencil is going to benefit here, but my guess is you'll need generation 2, which means it will work with a recent iPad Pro. But there could be benefits for first-generation pencil owners too, just not as dramatic, probably. The iPad Air rumor isn't the only indication of a big change coming to the iPad range. A new patent just spotted by Patently Apple shows something really off the wall, a frame which folds out and contains multiple projectors. These are designed to shine a virtual keyboard onto the desk, or whatever. Crazy, huh? This patent doesn't specify which product it will be attached to, so it could be an iPad Pro, MacBook or who knows what else. The idea is that the projected keyboard would appear on another surface, so you could tap on that. Sensors will then spot where your fingers and thumbs are, and recognize which keys you're trying to hit. This is not the first time a projecting keyboard has been used, but in my experience the reliability and the Mac, and the external keyboards on iPads, is the travel in the keys, which obviously isn't there, if you're tapping your fingers on the desk. There is literally no amount of weight or space saving that would make me choose this method over something light, thin and most importantly yielding to the fingers as the magic keyboard for the iPad Pro. That said, I don't know exactly how Apple would implement such a solution, and it could be something brilliant. This is very different. An ultra-wide camera, though eminently useful in many situations, is rarely used except as a supplement to a regular wide camera. It offers great versatility and allows you to take in the whole panorama without stepping back. But to include this, and not a wide as well or instead, is unheard of. This is also a surprise as it's a higher pixel count than the ultra-wide on the iPad Pro. Well, iPad cameras aren't used in the same way as iPhone snappers. The addition of the LiDAR scanner, which is not expected on the iPad Air, is proof of how a tablet is better for Arkansas functions than just simply snapping images. After all, a flat wide-shaped object is much less ergonomic than one you can hold easily in one hand or, come to that, a proper camera with its helpful grips and carefully weighted design. So, Apple may be recognizing that an ultra-wide camera is all you need on an iPad. I've been using the ultra-wide on the iPhone 11 much more than I thought I would. It's certainly useful for bigger shots and surprisingly effective for portraits, too. As for the pixel count being higher than the iPad Pro, I think that indicates that Apple would take the 12MP ultra-wide sensor from the iPhone 11. That's assuming the smaller thickness of the Air compared to the iPhone doesn't make that impossible. 
The Air is marginally thicker than the iPad Pro, 6.1mm and 5.9mm respectively, while the iPhone 11 is 8.3mm. Or this could be an all-new sensor, but it seems surprising to have developed this for the Air before the Pro. Apple may have wanted to make sure it was the best it could be. Well having been said, this is all I have for you guys, once there's new update I will share with you guys right away. Please subscribe, like the video, comment thanks for watching see you on my next video one peace out.